B. Me, 23. Late 1990s. Russia. Inherited my grandfather's old farm. In Russia we don't have the same regulations and strict protocol as some of you might. This has led to many animal rights violations in the area with farmers, such as brutal killings of livestock and such. But just about all of the farmers in the area swear there are creatures in the nearby forests that do these unspeakable acts to their animals. And I have a few experiences of my own with these creatures. I was out on a walk one day when I saw this dog running around aimlessly in the woods. The dog ran right up to me, not like a normal wild canine would run at you, it was like he wanted to be petted or something. So I did. That's when things got weird. The thing looked so much like a dog but had too many eyes. I could see them moving independently from each other, almost like they were all scanning me at different intervals. It licked my hand like a domesticated dog, but then its head turned back towards the forest. As soon as I realized what I'd seen it vanished into the trees in an instant. Now I'm sure most people wouldn't believe me if I told them I'd been petting an alien creature, but I couldn't deny what I just witnessed. After that incident I became obsessed with finding out more information on these beings that I thought lived among us. Because I knew that wasn't a dog. I later found out that some of the local hunters had also encountered them. They claimed to know what they were but refused to say anything else. I decided to go into the forest near where I'd seen the creature. When I got there I saw a trail that seemed to disappear into the forest, and I began following it, being careful to stay at least 10 feet away from the edge of the trees. I followed the path for about 20 minutes until it ended abruptly at a clearing. At first I thought I'd missed my way somehow, but no, there was clearly a building here. The grass in front of the building was burnt black, even though it was winter. There were strange markings on the ground, like chalk outlines, and two large stones, one directly in front of me, and another that seemed to face the forest. I went over to examine the stones, they were definitely human remains, but they weren't recent. Had they been here for years? Maybe they'd been there before the forest was burnt. Whatever had happened, it wasn't natural. I looked around the rest of the clearing, it was very sparse, nothing growing in the dirt, no plants at all except for the burned grass. Then I noticed the door. It was made of wood, and looked like it had been buried in the dirt and covered by leaves. I brushed off as much dirt as I could and pried open the hinges with a stick. To my surprise, it opened easily. When I stepped inside I was shocked. There were animal bones everywhere some kind of small rodent, a bird, and a rabbit. I picked up the rabbit, it felt dry and brittle in my hands, like it had been there for months rather than days. I moved deeper into the building, looking around. Everything was in disarray, it looked like someone had ransacked the place. I walked across the room towards the back wall, and saw a bunch of empty bottles scattered around the floor. Then I heard a sound coming from behind me. I spun around and saw one of the dog things staring right at me. It started to growl while foaming at the mouth. I took a step back. I didn't want to get eaten by an alien dog thing. I was still on edge from the last encounter, and I quickly retreated outside, closing the door behind me. I sat down on the ground, trying to calm myself. But suddenly I heard glass shattering from another part of the house. Oh fuck. It must have jumped outside to get me, I thought to myself. I started running into the woods as fast as I could, hearing the thing trampling behind me while making these god-awful screaming noises. There was a sharp pain on my ankle, I fell to the ground, it had grabbed a hold of my leg. I tried to stand again. But I couldn't move. I was pinned to the ground, I struggled against it but I couldn't break free. It was too strong. I began to panic, the thing was going to kill me now. Then I heard a man yell out from behind me. Get the fuck down kid. I ducked down and heard a loud bang and a jolt from the creature latched onto my leg. And then the dog let go of me, I looked up and it began running off back into the woods. I got up and limped my way into the clearing. The man was standing there, a shotgun in his hand. He looked like he was about 30, maybe 40. 
He also looked scared shitless. Before I could say anything he pointed the gun at me and said. Stay the fuck away from this place. I nodded and limped away as fast as I could. I left the forest and returned home as fast as I could. I told my family what happened, but they wouldn't believe me. Now here I am reaching out to see if any of you know anything about what the fuck I saw that day. Here's a story my grandmother has told people every time someone brings up skinwalkers and wendigos. Grandmother, 15 years old. Rural area in Texas. There's an old abandoned school just south of our town. Strange sightings of abnormally large animals are common near the school. One night my grandmother and a group of her friends decided to go check it out for themselves. They were playing with firecrackers and they started hearing strange gurgling noises from inside the building. So they sneak into the school through the window. They're all armed with sticks and rocks, because the stories about what happens if you mess with these things are pretty scary. There's a room off to one side that is really dark so they decide to light one of their firecrackers and throw it in there. And when they do, a big lizard-like creature comes slithering out of the darkness, its eyes glowing red. It's huge. One of her friends yells. The other girls grab for their weapons, but they can't find them in the darkness. My grandmother pulls out her pocket knife and tries to stab at it, but misses. She grabs another stick and tries again. She hits it in the head, but not hard enough to kill it, and it turns around and runs back into the darkness, into the shadows. They follow after it, trying to hit it with rocks to try to make sure it doesn't come back. But it's too fast, it keeps running away from them until finally it gets up on top of some boxes. And then it looks down at them below. And starts to laugh. And they realize it is laughing at them. And then the creature turns its head and sees something behind it, and it laughs even louder. It then jumps off the top of the boxes and flies right toward them, jumping from box to box as it goes, laughing all the while. Until it lands on top of my grandmother's friend. It begins to tear away at her jacket while everyone stands by staring in horror. The creature then starts to tear away at skin while the girl screams in pain. And then she falls silent and still. Everyone panics and they run away, leaving her friend lying there. They didn't want to look back and see what happened next. A few days later they found her body in the same spot. Her arm had been torn off completely and there was blood everywhere. The police came and took pictures, but couldn't say whether or not it was animal attack, human attack, or a combination. My grandmother never spoke of this again, and told us kids we shouldn't be messing with stuff like that. We knew better than to believe her anyway. I don't think anyone else ever went back to the site. Grandma passed a couple years ago. B18. Friends and I go on a fishing trip near the Rocky Mountains. About a 40-minute hike from the nearest dirt road where we parked. Start fishing at about 7 a.m. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Dog with us seems disturbed by something a little ways down the river from us. When he starts barking, I look around to see what is bothering him. Hush, I tell him as my friend and I continue fishing until about noon. After that, we pack up our stuff and head back to the car. The entire way back the dog seems anxious and scared. Suddenly we hear a crashing noise in the woods and the dog goes running in the noise's direction. We try and follow the dog but he's too fast and we lost him in a matter of seconds. We spend the rest of the afternoon searching for him to no avail. As soon as the sun sets, we decide to try and come back early tomorrow and search for my friend's dog again and start heading home. We are driving along the dirt road when suddenly my friend turns off onto some random trail that leads into the woods. I'm kinda confused as to why he would do such a thing since we had already passed another path leading back to the main road without even thinking about it. 
But whatever so we drive through these woods and end up on a small path that takes us to a clearing with a creek flowing through it. The sun has set now and the moon is starting to rise. We park the car and get out to stretch a bit before we start hiking back to the car. As we're standing there looking at the stars, I notice that one of them is spinning very rapidly. At first I think I'm just imagining things until I realize it's not going in any direction. It's just spinning really quickly like a top. My friend's girlfriend looks up at me and says. You better be fucking with me right now. At this point, I have no idea if she's joking or not so I say, no, seriously, look. She points towards the sky and there's a massive flying creature coming down from the sky towards us. It's about 150 feet long and 5 to 6 feet wide. It's covered in dark gray fur, has a snout like an elephant, and huge tusks jutting out from its mouth. Its eyes glow red and it gives off a creepy vibe that makes you feel uneasy just being around it. We all freeze as we watch the beast approach. Suddenly, it lets out a deafening roar and charges towards us. Our adrenaline kicks in and we run into the woods screaming and hollering and trying to find a safe place to hide. We circle around the clearing and head into the trees. The beast keeps following behind us growling and roaring and knocking over trees in its path. We make it to the other side of the clearing and climb some rocks to get away from the creature. Finally, we spot a cave and rush inside. The beast slams itself against the entrance and continues roaring as we barricade ourselves in the cave. The beast roars for a few minutes then stops. A few hours later, the monster leaves and we emerge from our hiding place. My friend's dog is nowhere to be found. We don't say anything for a while because neither of us knows how to feel. We keep talking about the fact that we saw something so big that it was able to knock over trees and break rocks with its body. We decide to go back to the car and get the fuck out of here. We pull up to the car and we see my friend's dog's paw next to the car and a note on the windshield written in blood. It says, sorry, I couldn't help myself. We all freak the fuck out and start crying. We have no idea what happened to the dog. And we have no idea what is doing this to us. We start to drive home, in near silence with the occasional silent crying of one of my friends. We never did find out what the hell that thing was, nor did we want to go find out.